Hi everyone, Ashley here and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing how to make this fun robot themed birthday card that I actually made for my sister for her birthday. It's become sort of a tradition for me to make robot themed cards for my sister for her birthday. I don't know why, but it's been going on for a few years now, so I feel like it's been going on long enough that I cannot break the tradition. So I always have to think of a new way to incorporate robots into her cards, and I had a lot of fun with this one, so I hope you enjoy too. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Before I start talking about the card making, I will just introduce my cat Luna. If you have not watched any of my videos before, um, this may be your first time seeing her, but if you have watched my videos before, you probably have seen her before. She likes to join me in my videos and she particularly liked to join me in this card. Um, I think that's because she knew it was for my sister and she loves my sister. Um, so I think it was particularly fitting that she was around for a lot of this video. So you will be seeing her a lot. <laughs> So um, to start this card, I am stamping out a bunch of the images. They come from a couple different Lawn Fawn stamp sets, which I will list in the description down below this video. I stamped, it out, stamped them out in Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which is a Copic friendly ink onto some white paper with my Mini Misty. I put those aside just to make sure the ink could dry and then I can sort of assemble this card in the meantime. I cut out a white frame using the Lawn Fawn Four Square Backdrop Landscape die, which is basically just a die that cuts out this piece of white cardstock you see here that's cut into a frame shape with four cutouts. Um, and I also cut out four scrap pieces of Spiffy Speckles cardstock in those four colors you see there, pink, green, blue, and yellow. And those are cut to be just slightly larger than those rectangle openings. I'm going ahead and laying down some double-sided tape on all of the sides of this frame. So the outer sides as well as the sort of crosshairs in the middle. And I just wanted those all to be sticky because I'm going to be sticking down those spiffy speckles pieces onto them um, and this will allow them to stick. Um, and this is all gonna sort of be on the back. So once all that double-sided tape is down onto the frame, I can take my pieces and just inlay them into those squares, just making sure to leave enough space for all of them to be stuck down. And when you turn it over, you get this beautiful piece with the white frame on top and those four color panels behind. Then I can take the whole piece and just stick it down onto a white card base and this frame cuts out to be the size of a standard size card base, so four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I can just stick that down, hold it down until it's fully glued. Now I took Finley's ABCs and used them to cut out the words beep boop, which I thought was very appropriate for robots, um, out of both white and holographic cardstock. And I'm just gluing each letter um, in holographic onto the same letter in white with a little bit of an offset. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a white shadow behind that holographic. Just adding some liquid glue behind each of the letters and gluing them down and holding them until they're stuck. Um, this holographic paper, by the way, is also from Lawn Fawn and it's got this beautiful square um, pattern in it that I thought was just perfect for sort of a robot computer theme because it kind of looks like a computer chip to me. It's so beautiful and I will sort of turn it in the light near the end of the video so you can see the full effect. Okay, so now that all of that is sort of assembled and ready to go, it's time to come back to these images and color them in. And I'm using my Copic markers for this. Like I mentioned, I used Copic Friendly ink. I used Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink to stamp these out, and I stamped them onto Copic Friendly paper. If you're unsure of sort of which paper or ink to use if you're using Copic markers, though really the main thing to check is that, um, especially for inks at least, is that it's Copic Friendly, which means that it won't bleed when you use alcohol markers. Some inks will bleed when they come into contact with the alcohol markers, so it's just important to find one that doesn't. And there are a whole bunch in the market um, but Lawn Fawn Jet Black is definitely one that I like a lot. Um, the paper is a little bit easier. You really just have to find a paper that kind of works well for you um, and blends the markers well. I think there's some papers that just act a little bit less good in blending the markers. They just don't allow the marker ink to kind of seep in and blend as nicely. Um, one paper that I found works quite well is Nina Solar White, um, but there are definitely others out there on the market. Um, and again, just kind of look for um, maybe other people having experience with them, or even just like testing it out yourself to see what you think. So for the robots, I just colored them all in with the same cool gray colors. Um, and I just decided to keep them all the same because there's gonna be a lot of colors happening on this card. There's already a lot of colors in the background and each of these elements is gonna be a fun color. So um, I decided to just keep the robots sort of the same uniform so that they're not also um, adding an extra kind of distracting element of variety into the card. There's already enough going on here, so um, the robots can kind of be uniform and that's fine. For the rest of the elements, I'm using the sort of the same color palette that I introduced with the Spiffy Speckles paper and kind of just trying to keep all of them within that same color family. 
So for the balloons, I colored them with blue and yellow, um, and then I colored a few of the other little things with blue and yellow as well. And now I'm coloring the cake green, um, and I'll also bring in sort of a light pink for some of the elements too. Um, and I just kind of, you know, there's already enough colors happening, so I didn't want to add any more than I needed to, and I think that this worked out really nicely. Um, as I go through, I am sort of just coloring in all the elements that need that color at once. So like I colored in a present, a hat, and a balloon with blue all at once so that I didn't have to like close the marker and open it again. <laughs> I can be a little bit lazy that way, but it is a good way to sort of speed up your coloring so that you're not constantly opening and closing markers for every little piece, especially when you have a lot of images like this with a lot of really tiny elements that all need different colors. Um, I find something that kind of speeds it up is to just pick out the elements you want for that one color and color them all in at once. So you can just keep your blue markers out, color everything that needs them, and then put them away and move on to the next color. For the cakes, I decided I want them to be chocolate cakes. That's my favorite flavor, and I think my sister likes it too. Um, so I colored those in with brown, and then again, I can come back in with those same colors from the color palette I decided on and color in the tops to make it look like they've got different colors of icing. Just finishing off some of these party elements, um, if you wanted to see exactly which sets all of these elements and images come from, uh, just check out the description down below this video. I list all of the names of all the stamp sets that I use um, in every single video that I do, so you can always check it out and see where those images come from if you're curious and if you want to kind of make this at home yourself. Okay, so I'm just finishing off coloring this cute little bird popping out of the box and then all of the images are colored. Off camera, I went ahead and cut them out so that they're ready to adhere to the card. And now really all that's left to do is to assemble this card together and glue everything down. Off camera, I also stamped out the sentiment, which comes from the same stamp set um, as the robots. And it says, gear up for a happy birthday. And I stamped it in gray ink. Cut it down into little strips and glued it right down onto the top of the card right in the center. So the only tricky thing about assembling this card, um, sort of trickier than cards that I usually make, is that I wanted to glue everything down flat um, because a lot of these images are behind the words beep boop. I wanted the words beep boop to be absolutely at the top. I didn't want anything covering them up. Um, so all of the other images kind of have to be tucked in behind them. So I had to be really careful about what I was gluing down first and what I was gluing down sort of underneath something or on top of something. Um, and if I wanted something to be in the back or I glued down behind, then I had to make sure to glue it down first. So if you're doing this at home or making a card like this at home, I guess my only tip is to sort of just assemble everything where you think you want it to be first without gluing anything down yet. And that's what I've done here. And that's why you see a lot of the images are already on the card. They're not glued down yet though. Um, and I'm kind of just going through one by one and picking them up and gluing them down as I see that I need to. So for the images that I know are going to be in the back, I'm taking those and gluing them down first. And then I can come back in for the images that I can see are going to be on top and glue those down second. Um, and I kind of just work my way through the card like that. So, you know, for the balloons, I knew those were pretty much going to be in the background. So um, I'm taking those and gluing them down. Now you can see they are overlaying on top of the sentiment, so it was important to glue that down first, which I've done. So it's really kind of just about identifying what needs to be glued down first, what needs to be glued down second, and making sure that everything goes in the right order so that you're not gluing down things that you then want other things to go behind. Um, because then of course you can't glue something behind it if it's already glued down. I kind of just distributed the robots, like I put one in each of the quadrants and then I put the little bird in one of the quadrants so that each quadrant of the card has its own little sort of mini scene going on, which I thought was really cute. Um, and yeah, I'm sort of just kind of continuing to go through and glue things down one at a time. Um, I'm going to speed ahead a little bit here so that um, I've now done a lot of the gluing. And I'm just finishing up with some of the final images. So just gluing down that cake now, um, and I had made a little boo-boo on it, so I covered it up with one of the little gear images that I had stamped off camera. Um, and then I can just glue down the rest of these letters for the words beep boop. Now for each of these letters, I am really holding them down for quite a while to make sure that they're fully stuck down to the card, because if you notice, they're sort of going over that frame piece, and the frame is sort of one cardstock layer higher than those spiffy speckle pieces in the back, because those spiffy speckle pieces were glued behind the frame. So for those letters, they kind of have to go from the spiffy speckles over the frame into the next spiffy speckles um, on the bottom. So uh, you don't notice it when the card is done, like it's not like something that you'd see and like have it look bad, but it is important when you're sticking these letters down to really hold them down for quite a while until the glue has a chance to dry and hold um, those letters kind of down over that little hump that they have to go over. 
Okay, so once that's done, I'm just gluing in a few little gears. Like I mentioned, I had stamped these out off camera just with a couple different matching colors to the card. Um, those gear images come in that same stamp set with the robots also. So they are kind of a fun little accent to put in the background um, just to kind of fill out the card with a bit more detail. And that is it. Like I mentioned, once I turn the card in the light, you can see how gorgeous that holographic paper is. Um, it comes in a pack from Lawn Fun with a few other designs as well, so I'm excited to try out some of the other ones, but this one is so much fun. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you are a little bit inspired to use these supplies or make a card like this on your own. If you want to see more of my cards, definitely head over to my Instagram account, which is linked in the video description down below, or check out the rest of the videos on my YouTube homepage. There are quite a few more there. <laughs> thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!